As the month of July nears its end, Kyle Busch is still without a contract for next season, and some industry insiders now seem to believe it's unlikely he returns to Joe Gibbs Racing next season. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. Consider this video your midsummer NASCAR silly season checkpoint. We're going to talk a lot about Kyle Busch, of course, as he is still the biggest free agent on the market. But recent reports link several other drivers to rides for the 2023 season. We're going to touch base on many of those in just a moment. But first, this episode is sponsored by my friends at Fram. Fram offers a full line of filtration technology to help keep your engine running at optimal performance and to help keep the air inside your vehicle clean. Their ultra synthetic oil filter provides protection for up to 20,000 miles when paired with synthetic oil. Fram's Tough Guard engine filter is engineered for harsh driving conditions, stop and go traffic, extreme temperatures, towing and hauling, and more. And to keep the air around you nice and clean, check out Fram's True Air cabin air filter. It's easy to install, it features N95 grade protection, and it protects your vehicle's air conditioning unit to keep it running efficiently. Thank you to Fram for sponsoring this episode. Head to Fram.com now to find the best parts near you. Let's begin with the biggest fish. Kyle Busch is still without a ride for the 2023 season. Both he and Joe Gibbs once again expressed this weekend at Pocono that they are determined to get a deal done to keep Kyle Busch in the 18 car next year, to keep Busch as a part of the Toyota family. But both sides continue to express frustration that a deal has yet to be finalized. Nothing new. That's basically what both sides have been saying for two or three months now. Now, we did learn some new information last week from NBC Sports. They reported that Oracle, major technology company, they were close to striking a deal with Kyle Busch and Joe Gibbs Racing until, until it apparently fell apart at the last minute. Oracle's a huge company, the kind of company that can afford to spend millions in motorsports. They already spend millions sponsoring Red Bull's F1 team. Unfortunately, they will not be bringing that sponsor money to NASCAR and Joe Gibbs Racing. So as of right now, Kyle Busch still without a sponsor for next year and therefore still without a ride for next year. All year long, when asked about Kyle Busch's future, I've maintained that the most likely outcome is he stays in the 18 car. He stays with JGR next year. And I think most in the industry have shared a similar opinion. That is until very recently. Jordan Bianchi, writer for The Athletic, said on The Teardown, his podcast he does with Jeff Gluck every weekend, that right now he doesn't think Kyle Busch will return next year. I would be... <laughs> I think at this point I would be surprised if Kyle Busch returns to Joe Gibbs Racing. Really? I think it's gotten to that point from the conversations I've had with people I'm not saying it's going to happen. I, I just want to, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying that there could still be a path to him returning to Joe Gibbs racing, but I think there it's already too far down the road and too much would have to fall in place for this relationship to continue for another year. Bianchi is a veteran reporter, very well respected in the industry. He's not breaking any news there. He's just sharing his gut feeling right now. Then on Door Bumper Clear, of course, podcast owned by Dale Jr. Sturdy Mo Media Network that features active NASCAR spotters, Freddie Kraft, spotter for Bubba Wallace, mentioned he heard that Gene Haas was at the track this weekend at Pocono, something that is fairly rare these days. And he mentioned a surprising SHR car as a potential landing spot for Bush next season. I heard rumors yesterday that, that Gene Haas was there yesterday. Um, that's this is not very common for him recently. He hasn't been in a lot of cup races, I don't think. Where, where else is he going to go? I mean, it's the 18 or it's the 41. The 10's already got a driver, I, you know, in my opinion. That guy's not retiring. Again, to be clear, both Freddie Kraft and Jordan Bianchi, respected industry insiders. But in this case, both are just guessing. Educated guesses, perhaps, but that's all they are. Still, I think both their guesses are indicative of of a shifting tone. Up to this point, it's been, you know, yeah, Kyle doesn't have a contract with JGR done, but you know, there's no way Toyota will let him go. They'll figure it out. To now, things seem to be shifting. Like Bob Pocker's Fox Sports addressed a recent rumor that Kyle Busch may end up at RCR next year. He says it's not happening, but it, you know, never say never. And to keep going, you have Jeff Gluck, writer for The Athletic, posting a freezing cold emoji in response to this video from NASCAR showing Kyle Busch kind of sort of ignoring Joe Gibbs after the race at Pocono. As much as I love Jeff Gluck, I think he's reaching a little bit right there. But still, the point is the tone has shifted. All year long, speculation was he'll probably stay with Toyota. Now, I think if you ask anyone in the industry, 
they're more inclined to say he's leaving. He might go to Stuart Haas Racing, who knows? It's a tricky situation made even more complicated by Kyle Busch's lofty demands. He wants to be one of, if not the highest paid drivers in the NASCAR Cup Series. That means Joe Gibbs Racing needs to find a major sponsor, someone who's willing to shell out 20 to $30 million a year. And as you can imagine, that's not easy to find these days. That clip I just played you from Door Bumper Clear where Freddie Kraft mentions the 41 car maybe being the best SHR option for Kyle Busch, that was a little surprising. Of course, Cole Custer currently drives that car and he is the son of a high up SHR executive. So kind of felt like he was locked into that ride for a while, but now it sounds like that may not be the case. That 41 car is funded almost entirely by Gene Haas out of his own pocket right now. The 10 car, meanwhile, which Eric Almarola is supposed to be vacating at year's end, that car is heavily reliant on Smithfield's sponsorship. And now, it sounds more and more likely by the day, that Almarola may postpone retirement and race another year with Smithfield backing him. You know, maybe getting pressured a bit by Smithfield and SHR. Maybe they're sweetening the deal for Almarola to entice him back in. But it sounds increasingly every single day like that 10 car will not be an option for Kyle Busch, but the 41, this is the first I've heard of it. It makes sense. It's already fully funded by Gene Haas, who has very deep pockets and is invested into not just NASCAR, but also Formula One. If Bush goes to the 41, it could be funded out of pocket for a while. Maybe eventually they're able to piece some sponsorship together, but maybe that could work and maybe they could meet Kyle Busch's salary demands. I don't know what that means for Cole Custer, but quite frankly, his performance the last two years has been so disappointing. If he's out of the Cup Series next year, I say it's probably earned. But let's stay focused on Kyle Busch for one more minute. It feels like a lot of this is out of his control. It feels like his future is solely dependent on whether or not Joe Gibbs Racing can entice a major sponsor. But I'm not sure that's actually true. I think Kyle Busch still has a ton of agency. He has the ability to make several major decisions that could seriously impact his future racing career. Option one, kind of like I talked about last week, he could take a pay cut or maybe sign a one-year deal with JGR, punt all these negotiations down the line for a year, just like what Brad Keselowski did last year with Penske, signed a one-year deal for a little less money than he would have liked. He could do that because Joe Gibbs Racing right now, I think of all the teams available to him, again, Hendrick is not knocking on his door, Joe Gibbs Racing gives him the best opportunity to win races, win championships, continue to chase records. Kyle Busch is ninth on the all-time wins list. He has 60 career wins. He's trying to chase down Dale Earnhardt, who has 76. Joe Gibbs Racing gives you the best chance to be competitive on a weekly basis, perhaps it's worth it to consider taking a pay cut and make that deal work. Option two, you go to Stuart Haas Racing. Maybe Gene Haas is able to meet your salary demands, put you in that 41 car for a year, maybe a multi-year deal. You'll make your money, but will you be as competitive? Almost certainly no. Like right now, Stuart Haas Racing is a B to B plus level organization, whereas JGR is, is A. They're still at the top contending for championships. Stuart Haas Racing I mean, outside of Kevin Harvick, who hasn't won a race in almost two years, they look lost most weeks. They're lucky to have one or two of their cars crack the top 10. So you go that route, you might make more money, but I don't think you'll have as good of an opportunity to win races and championships and chase records. And then there's option three, which is you retire, or go do something completely different. You know, some of you guys in the comments have actually mentioned in recent weeks the possibility that maybe he seeks an ownership stake, kind of like what Brad Keselowski did with RFK. Maybe Kyle Busch looks for a team that would give him that option. Maybe there's a wild card out there. There are some teams still looking for charters next year. We know Dale Jr. is always looking for a charter. Can you imagine Kyle Busch driving for him? 2311 is always looking to a expand. There may be other teams out there. Maybe there's a team like Aspire who's considering selling a charter. So there's, there's a, option three is a wild card, but these first two I think are very real choices. So Kyle Busch is not stuck on one set path. No, he could right now, today, make a couple different decisions that would affect his future. I want to see Kyle Busch go to the team that will give him the best chance to win. He's a generational talent. I want to see what kind of records he can set. So in my opinion, Kyle Busch needs to come to terms with reality. He needs to swallow his pride, sign a one-year deal, take less money, stay with Joe Gibbs Racing, hopefully, contend for a championship next year, and continue looking for a sponsor beyond 2023. Swallow your pride. You are no longer the best driver in the NASCAR Cup Series. You're arguably not even top five, at least not statistically the last three years. Four wins in two and a half years, that's not Pete Kyle Busch. Blame the new car, blame the lack of practice sessions, blame the crew chief swap a couple years ago. Who cares? It's reality. Statistically speaking, Kyle Busch is not one of the best three or four drivers in NASCAR right now.
And with young, much cheaper, talented drivers like Ty Gibbs tearing it up in the lower ranks, with Martin Truex Jr. signing an extension with Joe Gibbs Racing, Kyle Busch has even less leverage now than he did when these negotiations began. Joe Gibbs Racing will give Kyle Busch the best chance to win races, chase records, and as a fan, that's where I want to see him racing next year. So he needs to swallow his pride, take a pay cut. Hopefully that allows a deal to be put into place. If he doesn't, if he chases the bag and goes to an SHR and runs 15th next year, that's on him. And I will be very disappointed as a fan. If he doesn't get a ride at all because his demands are too high, that's also on him. And again, fans will lose out because Kyle Busch is still a great driver. Maybe not top two or three right now, but he's still a great driver capable of winning a championship. Us fans would lose out if we don't get to see him race for another five, six, eight seasons. Whew, I've been wanting to get that off my chest for at least a few days now. I promised we'd touch on some other silly season news and rumors, so let's do that. Firstly, Adam Stern, Sports Business Journal, reported yesterday that Eric Jones and Petty GMS are close to finalizing a multi-year extension. Multi-year obviously could mean anything. It could mean two years, three years, four years, who knows? I know this year signing focus factor to like a 26 race deal was huge for Jones and that team. So hopefully that relationship continues on into the future. This has me really excited. Eric Jones to me has outperformed expectations in that 43. I know the next gen car was supposed to help a team like Petty GMS sort of catch up to the big dogs, but Jones has been top 20 in points for much of this year. He's got some top fives, some top tens. He's been competitive. He's been close like at Auto Club earlier this year. Talladega, obviously in the spring, he's been close to breaking through and nabbing a win. And with still, what, five races before the playoffs, there's a couple I have circled, like Michigan, obviously Daytona, he could still sneak into these playoffs. I would not rule it out. So I'm really happy that Petty GMS sees Eric Jones as maybe one of their main guys going forward. He's the driver they can build around, a guy going forward in the future. I think they have a great value pick there. Eric Jones was a TRD Toyota prospect up until you know they ran out of seats for him. So Petty GMS, I think, is getting an underrated race car driver. So I think it works out great for them. And hopefully this works out great for Eric Jones. I'm glad he's landed somewhere where he gets the focus. He's the main guy. They believe in him and we've seen some pretty solid results this year. I mentioned this a week ago, but I'll reiterate it. You know, while we're on the topic of Petty GMS, Adam Stern also reported last week that Noah Gregson is among their top candidates to land that 42 seat. We know, of course, it broke like a week ago that Ty Dillon will not return to the team next year. Both sides agreed to mutually part ways. It sounds like Petty GMS really wanted to go in a different direction. I was very impressed with Noah Gregson at Pocono this weekend. Obviously, he ran the Cup Series race, but I'm not even really focused on that. He's ran a few Cup races this year, had very mixed results. But his Xfinity performance at the end, racing Ty Gibbs, and credit to Ty Gibbs as well, the two raced each other very cleanly, very competitively, and with a ton of respect. I loved what I saw from Noah Gregson. He's had some low lights this year, like Road America, of course. But Pocono was a serious highlight. You know, I don't know that Noah Gregson has Cup Series star in his future, but he's popular with fans. I'm sure sponsors like him, and I think there is something there. There is a spark there, so I, I don't think he'd be a bad pick. It would certainly be a serious pivot from Ty Dillon. I feel like the two are polar opposites, at least personality-wise. And the last bit of silly season I once again want to reiterate, Eric Almarola sounds every single day like he's closer and closer to returning to SHR. Maybe just a one-year deal, who knows? Almarola's only like 38 years old. He's not old for a race car driver at all. And you'll remember his quotes a couple weeks ago when he was asked if he's reconsidering retirement. He gave a lot of non-answers, but he also said that he still wants to race. He made it sound like even if he retires from full-time racing, he wants to do some part-time stuff. So I, I think talking about sparks, the spark is still there for Eric Almarola to race and try to be competitive. Competitive. So again, if SHR and if Smithfield sweeten the deal a little bit, I think Eric Almirola could be enticed to stay. You know SHR wants him to stay because he brings with him at least 20, 30 races from Smithfield. That's serious funding. That's hard to find in NASCAR these days. So I know why SHR wants to keep him around. Smithfield, if they want to keep sponsoring Almirola, there's a good chance all parties will come together and get a deal done. This may not be Eric Almirola's final NASCAR Cup Series season. Those are just a few silly season rumors and reports I wanted to address here real quick, but the focus of this video is obviously on Kyle Busch is one of the biggest stories all year long, and it continues deep into the summer. Where will Kyle Busch end up next season? He's got to end up somewhere, right? Right. Anyway, that's going to do it. Share your thoughts down in the comment section down below. I always look forward to seeing your responses. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We talk NASCAR news. We predict rumors, react to races every single day on this show. And as always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. I couldn't do this show without your very generous support each and every month. 
So much happening in the world of NASCAR right now, every single day, good news, bad news, crazy news. We've got lots more to talk about later this week. Also, my Pocono Race Weekend vlog should be coming out very, very soon. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.